So good afternoon. I'd like to thank everyone for being here and give a special welcome to all of the exonerees standing here today and their families and supporters that are here in the audience. I'm Stephanie Camel. I'm an attorney and the director of the Illinois Innocence Project based at the University of Illinois in Springfield. Our project advocates on behalf of innocent women and men who've been wrongfully incarcerated for crimes they didn't commit. We also educate students, police cadets, and the public at large on wrongful convictions and work on legislative reform, which is why we're here today. The exonerees standing here today have been actually proven innocent in a court of law. They were wrongfully imprisoned for crimes that they did not commit and have collectively spent over 500 years of their lives in prison. They are sons, daughters, wives, husbands, mothers, fathers, family members, family members that were taken away and removed from their communities. This injustice did not just happen to them, it happened to their family and to their communities. It's also important for us to point out that when a person is wrongfully convicted of a crime they didn't commit, the victim does not receive justice and the perpetrator remains free. In compensating innocent people who've been wrongfully imprisoned in Illinois, the average is $11,190 per year of wrongful imprisonment, and it's capped at $225,000 per year. That is well behind other states and well below the federally recommended minimum standard of $50,000 for each year wrongfully spent in prison. This is not a partisan issue. In fact, the exoneree compensation bill, which is actually Senate Amendment Number 1 to HB 1015, has bipartisan support throughout the House and Senate. This amendment is a combination of HB 1015 and HB 1016, which passed out of the House with votes of 112 to 0 but it needs to be passed during the November legislative veto session. Currently, women and men have pending Certificate of Innocence hearings, and their compensation will be impacted significantly if this bill is not passed now. Maine pays over $90,000 per year of wrongful imprisonment. Texas, $80,000 per year of wrongful imprisonment. Mississippi and Indiana and many other states are at $50,000 per year of wrongful imprisonment, and we're at 11,190 on average. And because of that cap, the longer you've spent in prison, the less you get per year. This summarizes the main impact of this amendment, but I don't want you to take it from me. I want you to hear from the exonerees who have <coughs> experienced this injustice and hear their stories. And I'm going to invite up right now Johnny Lee Savory. He was wrongfully convicted at the young age of 14 and spent 30 years in prison fighting to prove his innocence. Johnny? Oh, shoot. Hold on one second. Oh, boy. My big hands. Oh, man. God, I can't put this on here. Oh, boy. Is this, is this on here? Where's this yours? Oh, yeah. No, I don't think this. Yeah, there we go. You, you better at it than I am. Oh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but good afternoon. I want you all to really understand the impact of what this bill means to each and every exoneree here in this room and those that are not here in this room. Imagine being just dropped on an island. You have nothing. That's what you come home to. You come home to nothing. Because when you have spent 10, 20, 30, 40 years in prison, if you're very blessed, you have maybe some of your siblings left or your parents. But most of us have lost most of everything. And instead of um, just giving up 
We find the strength every day to come, stand before you all, um, give each other the support that we need in order to get through this uh, journey. And we're thankful for those who truly understand where we're coming from, especially those 112 House of Representatives that voted for us without hesitation, without, without a thought, but yet we find ourselves stuck in the Senate. And we would love for the, those in the Senate who believe in this bill, who took on this bill, to champion this bill, this, uh, this cause, that they help it get to that veto session and put it on the governor's desk. Because we have a governor that truly stands against injustice. And we can see that by the things he's done since he's been in office, especially for the juvenile legislation that set the tone for the whole country. Now it's time for us as exonerees to um, let our real true thoughts and feelings be known what it is for me to be a single father struggling with a, a young eight-year-old daughter when there shouldn't be no struggle at all. Because once I, my innocence was proven, they should have took care of this. But they didn't. So today we stand before you, day here, and united with all the wonderful drum majors. I don't even call them attorneys no more drum majors for justice because they, they stand in our path and they echo our sentiments. And together, those of us here today and those of us who are in viewing and listening range, we want the bill to make it from the Senate to the governor's office on November 12th because this is the best holiday that we're going to see in a long time. Let us be there for our family our friends in our community. We have put our legislators in office for the purpose of making sure that injustice is a man-made cancer. And there's only three antidotes for it. Honor, integrity, and accountability. We get that, we can become whole, and we can better protect the future and not allow people to be wrongly convicted in no state. So let's stand together and let them know that, hey, we support you. We support the efforts. Give us the best holiday present ever. Give us our life back. As I invite our next speaker up here, I just want to make it clear that the, that the exoneree, when they receive a certificate of innocence, they have already proven their innocence in a court of law, and then they return to the court for another hearing to prove their innocence and receive their certificate of innocence from the state of Illinois. So they've gone through two hearings as they go to receive this money from the state of Illinois. Uh, the next exoneree I'd like to invite up is James Kluppelberg. James uh, was wrongfully imprisoned for 25 years and fought to prove his innocence. James? Thank you, Stephanie. As Stephanie said, my name is James Kluppelberg and I spent 25 years in prison for a crime I did not commit. At the time of my release, after those 25 years and after receiving my certificate of innocence, I was entitled to approximately $6,600 a year for my 25 years. That is way below the poverty level even in today's standards. This money may seem like a lot on the face when someone hears all $50,000 a year, but it really isn't when you think about what a person has to do in our situation to rebuild our life. When Johnny talked about being released with nothing on an island, that's just what you get released with. Me, I had a pair of sweatpants a box of legal papers, and I think a bar of soap and a few other things, and the $14 that I had off my prison account. That was all I had. Not to mention the fact that I have no knowledge about cell phones and the internet and all those other things that you have to learn how to use again to negotiate um, things like rent. And for me, it was really hard because it took over a year to get a job. No one would hire me, not because of my arrest, but because of the fact that I hadn't worked in 25 years. 
So I did not have a job history. I couldn't find a place to live because I did not have a renter's history. And this money, once you go through the process, will lessen those burdens. Because you can get things then like secured credit by having money to put up and say, I have this, to where you can restart your life. If you need training and help to restart your life, you can use this money for that. Simple necessities, just things like clothing because, let's face it, after 25 years, most of us get fat. <laughs> it's truth, you know? I mean, so there's a lot of things that this money is needed for. And one of the biggest things is to protect us. Protect us as exonerees because what happens is there are a lot of unscrupulous companies out there that prey on us when we are released and they come offering money. Well, we're gonna give you money against your future monies. What they don't tell you is it's at 100%. And it's totally legal because it's not a loan. They're purchasing a piece of your future settlement. And it gets eaten up very quickly at the small numbers of only 6,000 or 11,000 a year to where even when you do succeed, there's nothing left because you have to survive. So you have to accept what they're offering because our society revolves around a monetary system. This will lessen that burden to where there's actually something left. And those are the things that we want the people in Springfield to understand. And it isn't as much that we're looking for a handout, we're looking for a hand up. We just want to be able to contribute to society and do so in a meaningful manner where we're not always clawing and scraping. Just help us get back on our feet. We didn't put ourselves in this situation. We didn't ask to have our lives stolen from us. So just let us have a little bit of dignity to where we can wake up every morning not knowing, you know, not worrying about where our next meal is coming from, whether our lights are going to stay on. Just help us get started again. That's what this money is for is to help us reestablish our lives that were stolen from us. And with that, I just say thank you for your time, your attention, and uh, everybody have a great day and be safe. Thank you so much, James. Um, our next speaker is Jimmy Soto. And Jimmy has the distinction, the unfortunate distinction, of being the longest serving wrongfully incarcerated person in Illinois. Uh, he was exonerated after 42 years of spent wrongfully in Illinois prisons. Jimmy. Thank you all for coming and thank you for that, you know, uh, sober introduction. I just want to say that um, this bill is like uh, James Kobelberg said and like Johnny Savory said and like Everyone here knows that it's really the right thing to do. Um, it's not often that you see legislation that intersects with three things, and that is it's socially, it's also morally, and it's legally right to pass this bill. And there shouldn't be any delay on it because it is nonpartisan. This issue deals more, this bill does more than just give us some money, like everyone here would be attest to. Because each and every one of us here and each and every exoneree that weren't, wasn't able to come here because they're probably working, struggling right now, is the fact that if we had not gone to prison, we would have had some income. Even if you would have said it would have been minimum wage, right now, uh, you know, we would have that money. But instead, we spend decades in prison. And right now, I'm not a young man. A lot of the people that I know uh, are at retirement age. So here it is, I have to go work. I had to work one month after my release and I still gotta go work. I'm currently studying for the LSAT and I'm going to take the test tomorrow because I wanna be an attorney and I wanna be able not only to help people, to help people who are wrongfully convicted but also because I need some income. So, you know, it's good. I'll be a struggling student at my age and uh, and, and my story is not new, unique. Everyone here it has something that they, they 
they lost, and now they're trying to get it back. And this money just helps us get one step in that direction. Uh, I think that it shouldn't take as long for us to get the certificate of innocence, and I don't think it should take that long for the legislators to enact this bill and do what's morally, politically, and legally right. Thank you all. Hi, I'm Lauren Caseberg. I'm the legal director at the Illinois Innocence Project. Um, you know, this issue gets talked about in terms of money, but I need everyone to think about this as restitution. If my 12-year-old son went out and stole a bicycle and he got caught and he went through the court system, one of the things he would have to do is pay restitution back to the person he sold the bike from. Look around at every single one of these people up here. The state of Illinois stole years, decades from these people. The state of Illinois needs to restore them to where they would have been but for that theft of their lives, that theft of their families. $50,000 a year is just an example of what these individuals could have earned and could have saved. The, amount, the men and women you see here and the men and women, as Jimmy said, who are out working and couldn't be here today would have contributed so much to our society. And this um, compensation is a reinvestment into this community. It's a reinvestment into our communities, into the state, and it needs to happen, it needs to happen now. Illinois has always been a leader in different ways. We lead the nation in false confessions, we lead the nation in wrongful convictions, but we've also led through legislation. We've been the first state to require recording of interrogations. We were the first state to pass eyewitness identification reforms, the first state to pass a law that bans the use of deception in the interrogation room of juveniles. That was historic, groundbreaking, led the nation. And where are we when we do wrong? And we need to ind individually deal with those problems and th that wrongdoing. We're at the bottom. Illinois needs to pass this. It needs to pass it on November 12th. It can be done in a day or two, and it can go to the governor's desk. Many of the men and women you see up here advocating for this won't even benefit from it because they've already received their COIs. They're here because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for the next person who comes home and for the future. And it's time for the state of Illinois to do the right thing by all of them. Thank you all for being here, and I think we could take questions if there's any questions. Does anyone have any questions about the bill at all or anybody that, that spoke? We'll, we'll stick around. We will be here. We can answer any further questions. But um, just thank you so much for being here. And again, as, as we all have said, we really implore the Senate to move and act on this in November 12th, Senate Amendment Number 1 to HB 1015, and get this passed. There is no opposition. We appreciate the legislature's support, the bipartisan support. Let's get this done. Thank you.